one of the biggest challenges for patients is how to explain this illness to other people. Um, it's hard to even understand it themselves. But my advice to patient is to patients is number one, uh, they need to be uh, they need to self educate because if you don't understand the illness, then it's hard to explain it to other people. Develop a vocabulary for describing how the illness impacts you and what your needs are, and develop uh, communications around that. And educate yourself so you can learn as much as possible about the illness, and that gives you better tools for communicating to others. Second is you should only worry about describing this illness to the people that matter. That should be a very small circle. The people that you uh, depend on, that love you, that you love, because there is a big black hole of people out there who will never understand this illness until we have more objective markers. And there is not enough energy in the world to invest in trying to explain. And there's no need to explain to those uh, other peripheral people. So I tell patients to invest their energy in their most important loved ones and otherwise uh, kind of uh, let the other people fly. Uh, we have an analogy of, the, of, of, of being like a turtle, and the turtle is the mascot for our patients because a turtle is uh, patient and persistent. Uh, the, uh, and also the turtle has a hard shell. So the turtle learns to have self-defense and protect themselves and be independent. They can pull their feet in when they need to. Um, but it's really important to not be too concerned about the judgment of others, but get that self-reliance, your own education, and your team around you. So patients want to know, uh, can they go on and do normal life activities with ME-CFS? Can they get married? Can they have children and raise a family? And my advice to my patients is, you can probably have almost anything you want. You just can't have as much. Um, so take the. you might have to prioritize, and it might require more resources. But I have many patients uh, who choose to get married, who choose to have children, even when they're ill. But you must be very realistic about the resources you're going to need in that situation. And if you plan ahead and provide those resources, then you can go ahead and do the things that bring you joy and happiness. And one of those is having children. There are higher risks, probably, surrounding uh, pregnancy and delivery. And uh, the care of children is very demanding and can aggravate the illness. So, but otherwise, philosophically I, and uh, medically, I don't think there's any reason why it's not possible for those that find that to be one of their most important goals. Fortunately, there are many hopeful developments uh, in research on the horizon. I am as optimistic now as I have been in my entire career about what lies ahead. I think one of the most important steps we need to take is the identification of subgroups. And we should be able to do this with some of the studies that are um, happening right now, gene expression studies, epigenetic studies, uh, uh, increasing awareness of the uh, autonomic aspects of this illness, the autoimmune aspects, the neuroinflammatory changes, and I'm also very interested in the neuroendocrine changes that may be playing a role in this illness. So we're on the threshold of really being able to understand a lot more, and uh, that should cause an explosion in research. Just a few toeholds are what are necessary. Another area of research that will be very important in the near future is the more uniform understanding that post-exertional malaise characterizes this illness. And as we do not really have a way of even describing post-exertional malaise. We don't understand it yet. I think these gene expression studies are opening the door to understanding what's creating uh, that relapse of illness, but that's going to be the key, and I think it's going to be the focus of research in the next, in the near future. So there's definitely a political element uh, to this illness. I can't speak for what's going on outside of the U.S. Um, those politics are going to have to be uh, dealt with by people who are immersed in them, but I'm pretty immersed in the politics in the U.S. And uh, I think two of the 
there's a lot of controversy about this. I consider them positive developments. One is the uh, project at the Institute of Medicine to review the evidence base and recommend diagnostic criteria for MECFS and also uh, make recommendations about the name. Uh, I've been on that committee. I feel uh, it was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. I feel like a lot of hard work went into that, and that will be um, released probably in the near future, uh, early in 2015. Uh, there will be that will be uh, the, the results of that will be uh, the contract will end and, and that will be made public. So that's a really big change, uh, and it's going to change the face of what we're doing because by definition we asked we were asked to make changes to evaluate. And how that will be received and how that will be used, I guess we'll have to wait and see. The other big project going on is the NIH uh, P2P or Pathways to Prevention Workshop that's occurring or will have occurred in December of 2014. And that the results of that will be available before the end of 2014. And uh, the, the purpose of that, there may be a lot of disagreement, but Ideally, the purpose of that project is to weigh the evidence, to identify gaps in the research, and determine next steps. So hopefully we can, even if we have disagreement about the outcome, uh, that important last step of determining next steps uh, will be part of the mandate, and it will move research, research forward. So I really feel like those two efforts, by hook or by crook, are going to move this whole field into a new place. And hopefully it will be a place of more research and a lot more mainstreaming of these illnesses into medicine so they're not uh, out on the periphery without attention. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube. Tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp@me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chat sessies.